Escape from Tarkov has surged yeah. in popularity over the last <laughs> six months and is now one of the most popular games on Twitch, averaging Ooh, over 20,000 viewers sitting in the top 20 games on the platform. If you're anything like me, the first time you saw this game being played, you might have clicked away pretty fast thinking, what the actual feck is going on? There is just an abundance of systems and things to learn in this game before you even get into the actual gameplay loop. I started playing EFT at the start of February in 2020, having just watched a popular streamer start playing it about a month earlier. I'd seen hundreds of hours of footage of him learning the game and was just dying to play it. I thought my PC at the time couldn't handle it, but it turned out it could. For the first four months of playtime, I played on the lowest settings possible just so I could get a stable 30 to 40 FPS. Don't even ask me how I managed to do that because after getting a brand new PC with modern specs and running at 1440p on high settings, I have quite understandably never looked back. What? Did I just get him? Who sucks now, mate? <laughs> I don't know if he's got a buddy or not though, so I don't quite want to just run down there. Oh! Fucking hell! <laughs> got him too, but he fucked me up. Oh, hello. Alright, let's get this guy. Oh, baby. This is when I go, um... Fuck the quest. See you later. Oh, fuck. <coughs> Textures and resolutions aside, after sinking at least 400 hours into the game and probably more than that again just watching and researching, I've clocked in at almost level 40 with just over 300 raids completed. Please don't laugh at my survival rate. But I came out with a huge wealth of knowledge unique to someone that has just started playing the game. That means come the fuck out, bitch. There are a lot of veteran players of EFT that make outstanding content and are very knowledgeable, but I'm hoping that this video will give you an insight into EFT from a different lens, hopefully helping you kickstart your time with EFT or maybe just aid you in making better decisions in the upcoming wipe. So let's get started. First and foremost, I want to stress this the most. You need to watch someone else play this game before you do yourself. There is no hand holding in this game and there is a lot to learn. You can absolutely tackle it yourself, but for me it's just not worth the trouble as there are a lot of basic fundamentals that you'll really need to understand before you even begin to think about succeeding in EFT. I'm not going to cover all of those in this video, but if you search around YouTube and the EFT wiki a bit, you'll be able to find an abundance of tutorials and beginner guides. I'd recommend getting a basic understanding of things like armor, weapons, ammunition, healing, inventory management, and looting before even stepping into your first raid. And on the topic of your first raid, don't make it an online one. In EFT, knowledge is absolute power, and going into a raid completely blind, never having stepped foot on a map yourself, is a surefire way to get yourself killed. I would highly recommend running a few offline raids to start with. Customs is a good map to get familiar with as it's fairly simple and is the go-to location for some of the early quest lines. As you're running through the map, have an image of the map open on another screen or on your phone, so you can really understand landmarks and how it all fits together. You'll also need to get a good idea of where your extractions are and how to get to them, so you can actually make it out. Once you think you have a good feeling for it, fire up another couple of offline raids, but this time with PvE enabled. This will give you a no-risk practice run against AI bots to give you an idea of how it might play while you're getting shot at. We mentioned quests on customs before, and this is really important. Something I see a lot of people do, myself included at the start, is ignore the quests, or tasks, that you get from the traders. Quests should be a really high priority for you to get done as they are the only way to get reputation to level up traders and help you in many other ways. Leveling up traders gives you access to higher level items such as better armor, ammunition and weapons and will be a huge help to you especially in the early levels when those items are too expensive on the flea market. They also give you a ton of experience which in turn levels you up, unlocking even more quests, trader levels and so on. Seriously, get these things done. I know some of them suck, but you'll thank me later. The other thing I neglected when I started playing Tarkov was the hideout. Casting it off is just a bit of a money sink, I didn't think much of it. But the hideout is another top priority for you in Tarkov, especially in the early levels. 
You can craft many items needed for quests in the hideout and those crafted items count as found in raid. So they can be sold on the flea market post patch 12.6 and can be used for found in raid quests. The hideout is also the source of the majority of my money. At later levels you can make absolute bank just by crafting items in the hideout and selling them onto the, either the traders or other players. There are some real hidden gems in there so honestly get to upgrading that hideout. Alrighty, so now you've done a few raids, you're questing, your hideout is upgrading, but you're dying over and over again and you feel defeated, right? Don't worry, everyone does. Literally everyone. It's something you have to get used to because this game is punishing. No seriously, it just bends you over and asks you to call it Pappy. It doesn't care how hard you've worked, sometimes you just get one shot in the face by a scab across the map. But as they say, that's Tarkov. One thing you've really got to understand is that dying isn't as big a setback as you may first think. Yeah, it sucks, but hey, at least you get health skill points. But in all seriousness, the knowledge you gain from your playtime, whether you live or die, is invaluable and is how you progress and get more skilled at the game. If you play this game with low risk kits the whole time, you're never going to learn how to move and survive and be tactical. You need to go out with your big dick gear every now and then and if you lose it, hey, it doesn't matter because it's all going to be gone in six months anyway when the next wipe happens. And speaking of big dick kits and surviving, ingrain this into your mind. Ammo is king. For each caliber of ammunition, there are different types of ammo. For example, for 545 by 39 you have PS, PP, BP, BT, BS and more. The ammo you take into a raid is probably one of the most important things you have to consider. Taking in a kitted out AK-74N with tier 5 armor and an Alton helmet isn't going to do shit if you're running PS ammo. Whereas if you go in naked with a stock AK and some BS ammo, you got a pretty good chance of one-shotting someone and stealing all their stuff. Seriously, it can't be overstated enough, your ammo should be top priority when you're choosing what to take into a raid. You don't have to go crazy and take the most expensive stuff in, just don't take the worst. See ya. And if you're wondering what is the best, I'll leave a link down below to a spreadsheet overviewing all of the ammo and what kind of damage values they have. But if you're really interested, I'd probably look up some other YouTube videos explaining all of this kind of stuff. While we're on the topic of loot, especially in the early game and early wipe, you should basically be picking up everything. Even those items that seem like total junk can be worth an absolute shite load of rubles. Bolts, screws, bulbs and hoses and other tool type items are all used for early hideout upgrades and when the wipe comes around, every single player needs them. So for that reason, they are worth a ton. You can either sell them off to make some early profit or hold on to them for all for your own upgrades and quests later on. A lot of quests require random find and raid items that of course become impossible to find when you actually need them. So holding on to them will alleviate some of that pain and speed up your quest completions. But of course, this takes up valuable stash space, so make sure you pick up some of the containers in the early game that make stash management a bit more bearable. The scav junk box is a beast of a container that can hold a lot of these random items, and this is the one to prioritize. Next I would focus on magazine and ammo cases along with a docks case to hold onto all of your keys and cash. It's a really great help to take into raids. And that about wraps it up. I've really enjoyed my time with Tarkov so far and can't wait to take all of this knowledge into a fresh wipe, something I've never experienced before. It's a seriously unique game that offers something that almost no other game does. Hopefully you enjoy it as much as I do. If you're keen to watch me play live, I stream Tarkov and other games on the weekends over at twitch.tv forward slash tallguybrams. Hopefully I'll see you around. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit all the things and leave a comment and let me know if you prefer burgers or pizza. Oh it's a really hard one for me, but personally, burgers take the cake. Or bun. Fuck you. What? Oh, he's got BP in this. Okay. Woo! No campers, no campers, no campers, no campers, no campers. Oh, baby. Oh, shit.